Cup week here in uh, New Zealand, and there's two days to this, show day on the Friday. Stephen Reid joins me for a start. Firstly, Stephen, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Coastal Babe um, behind us. What an electric flying uh, filly she's been. She's been terrific, eh? It's uh, probably been a little bit career changing, even though I'm getting on a bit now. Um, yeah, to get a good young filly like this so early on in her career has been uh, very, very much a bonus. Career changing? You've had a fair few nice horses around you. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I mean for later on in my life, because what's happened is, Paul, is that I'm probably not training the amount of horses that I used to train. Like, back in the day, I used to do around the 25, 30. These days, 12 sort of pulls me up, and obviously, the less horses you have, the harder it is to get a good one. Uh, I, do, I haven't got the access to buying yearlings that I used to have, so when uh, Summit Bloodstock came along with this, this idea, it was obviously much appreciated, and uh, yeah, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. You imagine going to the yearling sales and sifting through the pages, and you're trying to find that one good one, and you can only buy two. It's, it's pretty hard, so in that respect, it's been career changing. So, you, so you'd almost resolved yourself to sort of having just the horses that came through the stable um, and no expectations, I suppose, of reaching some of the lofty heights again? Well, 100%. I mean, I've done the, over the last few years, I've done the thing of going to dealing sales, trying to buy them on spec, and then trying to on sell them to clients. I have that many sleepless nights, and at my age, I don't want to wake up at three o'clock in the morning in a cold sweat worrying about how I'm going to pay for horses. So, of course, I've stopped that. And then when this opportunity came along, you know, you're going to the yelling sales and you've got the money. You know you're going to buy a horse and it's going to be paid for. So that's a big thing. So, uh, yeah, that, that's where I'm at at the moment with, uh, with this. That's huge insight. I mean, we wanted to talk about the filly. That's huge insight, I suppose, for anyone, one buying at the sales. Um, you know, young people trying to get into the game as well. A different way of actually probably looking at it and for your personal health, a much better way of looking at it, I would imagine. hundred percent, and especially when you get a little bit older, like the last thing you want to be doing is stressing about, you know, trying to find money to pay off horses that you've bought. And don't get me wrong, I've got a couple of horses in the barn at the moment, uh, one that I think I own 65% of because I bought it a year and a half ago and I only managed to sell 35%. So I sort of made the decision, I'm not doing that anymore. Yep. Um, obviously, if people want to buy yearlings with me, that's great, but I'd sort of need to have the money up front or the confirmation that it's going to be done before I go to the yearling sales. Tipping the guys at NZB would be a lot happier with that too, and any other sales I'm going from there. Uh, daughter of Down by the Seaside, uh, four starts, three wins, um, just a machine. Just a machine, just like, really came from nowhere. Uh, only had two two-year-old fillies in the barn at the time. They were both working up the same. The other one's all right, but this one's just, just gone on. And I don't know why, I don't know why she's gone on. Um, as I said before, it's like finding a needle in a haystack and um, she ran New Zealand record or equaled the New Zealand record at her second start, no third start when she won the Caduceus, led up, I've watched a lot of races at Auckland over the years and the sectional she ran in front on her own was very impressive and that's what sort of made me stand up and think maybe this filly's pretty good and then also you've got to that that Maddie White came back in and I know I know Maddie's very very big on her to the point that he even came down and drove her in the trial last Wednesday down here so yeah. He's putting in the hard yards and he's getting the results which is great for him um, I met him last year for the Grins and you know he, I think he had between about 15 horses there at Cambridge I think he's now moved and um, he's having a red hot crack Matty Oh yeah thing, things have gone really good for him and then of course he's stumbled on a very very good trotter um, he does a really, really good job. Quietly spoken, sometimes I find it a little bit hard to get the information out of him. But um, yeah, I think he, the night he won the Caduceus on Coastal Bay was probably the most animated I've ever seen him about a horse. Well, I was going to say his body language um, on that occasion uh, probably was harder to read because he didn't show much at all. He just sat down on her and just let her coast to the line and more or less said it's all about the horse, which I would imagine from a trainer and even owner's point of view, that's got to be so rewarding to see someone respect what they've got in front of them. 100%. I think, I think most good trainers, you know, will realise that you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. You've got to have the stock 
um, is you can be that you can be as good a trainer as there is, but if you haven't got the stock, you're not going to do anything. I suppose where it comes down to it is is when you get the good one, is then managing it and preparing it and having it being as good as it can on the day, and then you should get the results. We're here with um, Benny Hill's place, um, Sables. He's as you said been looking after. Do you guys ever get together and sort of try and work out what makes? A, a good horse like, um, you know, you guys have had them when you said you've had two fillies working up. I gather the other one's not as good as this filly, but it still might be okay. Yes. But you ever sit down and have a quiet <laughs> ale and try and work out what, what makes one that next level better? I think, Paul, the thing for me is, as I said before, I don't think that you can, I don't believe you can make a horse good. You can make a horse be as good as it can be but you can't make a horse be good. Otherwise, if that was the case, I'm sure there'd be a lot more top, top horses around. Um, it, I think it's, and the other thing too I want to say is, and I'm sure Benny would agree with me, is that when you're a trainer, you you just really want to be, to some point, be left to your own devices. Like he made a comment to me the other day that when he's on the track, he might go out there with a, the mindset that he's going to do A, B, C, but he might get out there and end up doing yep. D, E, F. You, 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 you have a preconceived idea of what you're going to do. I have a program in my mind that I'm going to stick to, but I can get out there on the track and actually change it up a bit. And I, I think that's probably why it's such a refined art, of, I suppose, for a bit of lack of a bit of term. Well, I was listening to you guys just talking just then, and Benny's going to gallop one in front of her for you. Um, and you're saying, what is it going to do? But you're both... And then you're like, well, we can change it on the fly. And I'm listening and I'm like, so there's no real set plan. You just want to give her a nice, easy hit out today, three days out, four days out from um, you know, her final, final hit out this year. 100%. Um, like her trial on last Wednesday was very, very good. Maddie came down and drove her. He did everything that I wanted. He was happy. She hit the line very strong. So it's really just about ticking her over. She has her final run today. Um, I just hope that Benny gets the times right. <laughs> but, you know, one thing I'm sure that if he doesn't, it's, it's all about he'll adjust it and um, hopefully hopefully when we pull up, everyone's happy. Right, mate. Let you go. Um, well done for the season you've had with her so far. Uh, look forward to her back next year. You are saying then she's got to be back uh, by February, actually, which is a quick turnaround for her. But um, then I suppose you've got a long winter um, to get ready for this time of year next year. Yeah, well, the thing is you only get one crack at these you know, your two and three year old season. She has got the Grand Prix on the 10th of December, but as I was saying to you before, 16th of February for Harness Millions three year olds. I want to give her a break. She actually has been up for probably near four or five months now. So I want to give her a break. So possibly the Grand Prix might have to just be put aside and we'll get her out in the paddock and then get her back to Auckland for the Harness Millions. Steve, thank you. The horses are coming in. You guys are ready to go back out, mate. Um, Look forward to it. See your uh, cup day and uh, definitely see your show day. Hopefully I'm interviewing you after you win. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.